Hello, I'm Jonathan O'Toole. I'm an abortion abolitionist, and this Prisoners of Christ list you see here has uh, 13 names on it, and I'd like to apologize if I've left anyone off. This is uh, March 2nd, 2019. I copied this list from Brother John Dunkel, whose last newsletter was r released uh, last year in May of 2018, and I've looked at uh, armyofgod.com and a few other sources online, and this is the best list I could come up with today. I'm open to uh, updating it. But these are people, men and women. Uh, Shelley Shannon has been released on uh, parole, I believe. But uh, these are uh, 13 uh, men. I don't think there are any more women on okay. this on this list uh, who have been imprisoned for resisting legalized abortion at some level for bringing the war which is daily perpetrated upon defenseless children uh, at some level bringing it to the people perpetrating that war so going into those war zones and actually physically or in some other way that that ended with their incarceration resisting legalized abortion in the United States of America and some of them I think in Australia so I'm not prepared to go into I don't see any of the Australians on the yeah I don't see the Australian either brother Robert Rudnick is uh, here with me I know there's an Australian man maybe he's not in uh, prison anymore or maybe we've missed him on our list we'll uh, bring that up to date as soon as we can but uh, to just go through their names uh, these 13 at least we have Alcius Markles Alcius in Newark, New Jersey. And you can write these people. In many cases, you can put money on their books. These are people who, of whom this world is not worthy, who have sacrificed their liberty to, you know, whatever you think about any mistakes they may have made or may not have made, the bottom line is we're walking around and they're in prison because they acted like little babies were being murdered who deserve to be defended. So, uh, Markles Alcius in Newark, New Jersey, uh, Robert Louis Deere in Pueblo, Colorado, Michael Griffin in Milton, Florida, Christopher Hansen in Forest City, Arkansas, Gregory Holt in uh, Tudker, Arkansas, Zachary Jordan Clunt in Great Falls, Montana, James Kopp imprisoned in Beaver, West Virginia, Ralph Long in Winnebago, Wisconsin, Scott Roeder in Ellsworth, Kansas. That's the man who shot the most notorious abortionist in the history of the United States, uh, Dr. George Tiller. Bobby Joe Rogers, Pollock, Louisiana. Eric Rudolph, Florence, Colorado. Jedediah Stout, Forest City, Arizona. Clayton Lee Wagner, Cumberland, Maryland. So we're not claiming this is an exhaustive list, but I'm going to turn this uh, broadcast over to Brother Robert Rudnick. I'm on my way to Africa right now, and I'll be in Africa for um, much of the rest of this year, God willing, working with other abolitionists to try to uh, expose and stop the neocolonialism that is pushing this abomination of legalized abortion on other countries especially African countries, through the eugenicist agenda. Rob is someone who has been a victor in a uh, Minnesota Supreme Court case, uh, showing the graphic images of abortion, a free speech victor, and also a victor for Second Amendment rights in a federal case, in a federal district court in Alabama, uh, where his guns were confiscated. And the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, our dear friends at the BATF, were actually forced by a federal judge to give Brother Rob back his guns. So that was a good victory. I want to turn this over to him and hear what Rob has to say about the prisoners of Christ. Thank you very much, Jonathan. It's a, it's a joy to be here. Um, the thing that is uh, weighing heavily on my heart is right now about the middle of March. This is the 2nd of March today as we're uh, speaking of this, 2019. The middle of March is going to be a big conference in northern Iowa about, or no, it's Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And it's, and it's organized by a guy from northwestern Iowa. Uh, named Brother Paul Dorr. Brother Paul Dorr. And they're going to be a big conference involving uh, confession and repentance of the sin of uh, acquiescing to uh, the greatest genocide that the world has ever seen. You know, 
And I wanted to talk about that for a few minutes. Uh, and and, and uh, they asked me, uh, Paul Doerr asked me to give just a couple of minutes about the prisoners of Christ. First of all, let's say that, you know, uh, it's extremely convicting when people have done something like that. It drives people that are in lesser levels of, quote unquote, resisting abortion crazy with conviction because these people have treated it as a Holocaust. And they say, well, you know, it's going to it's going to harm our peaceful efforts. Frankly, uh, we have to we have to begin with a new analysis. It's really an old analysis. But it'll seem new to us because for 46 years we've been slugging it out, uh, doing uh, nonviolent resistance, and it, and it, um, it, 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 we need to look for a paradigm shift of some kind. Now maybe maybe God that was God's will. I you know there's been plenty of times when I had my doubts, and here's why. First of all, <clears throat> uh, we have to understand that you know we're so nationalistic as Americans that we think that you know that this is the only country that's doing abortions when actually. It's a worldwide, century-old religious war on all humanity's posterity. And it's closely allied with people who also machinated the, purge, the, the, the genocides of Stalin, Mao, and yes, even Hitler. You can basically trace it all back to uh, globalist banksters, you know, and, and, and others who are openly stating now that they want to reduce the world's population like 95%. And they're doing a bang-up job of trying to reach that goal. They're proud of it. They want to do that. Uh, they make no bones about it. And we've been acting like, and, and we're, also, we're also seeing more and more evidence that the, I'm sorry, the world is run by pedophile, elite, satanic, cannibal Satanists. You know, uh, he's called he's called the God of the world. We're really beginning to uncover that um, in uh, just in spades. For instance, the very popular, well-known, and vilified Alex Jones has done an awful lot to uncover the level of that that kind of. It's beyond corruption. It's abomination. And you know, those are not the kind of people that you can play cozy political tiddlywinks with and expect to prevail. And at some level. These 13, you know, keep in mind that I am not aware of anywhere else in the world where there has been uh, uh, force resistance to this worldwide genocide. These may be the only, as far as we know, these 13 and maybe a few others, maybe like 20, and mostly in the United States, have, re have treated it like a war. Genocide is nowadays a tool of war, you know, uh, uh, take a look at what Sun Tzu, Sun Tzu and, and Clausewitz and, uh, uh, oh, that, what's that other guy's name, have said about uh, war. War is, uh, the first casualty in war is truth. War is one group forcing its will on another. Uh, moderation in war is an absurdity. Uh, you know, all these things that define war fit the aborticide genocide to a T. And these these rare people in terrible isolation, came to those conclusions and acted accordingly, and consequences be damned. And we, you know, for the most part, in, in, the, uh, in the abortion, the aborticide, resistance, abolition, uh, opposition to it, have really just let them, you know, fall by the wayside. I'll tell you what, Sinn Féin would never have done that to the IRA guys in prison. No, no movement in history. It really calls us into question as are we like operating, whether we know it or not, as c government controlled resistance? Something, something has to change. Okay, these guys, maybe these guys were right too soon, but they, uh, there was, you know, I'm here to defend their, the, the ethics of their situation. The worst among these guys didn't commit anything that isn't a routine violation in warfare. Okay, and most of them were, were high above that, uh, being very specific. One guy never heard a person, never heard a person. Did, Clay, Clayton Lee Wagner waged an incredibly ingenious campaign, never physically hurt anyone. And we can realistically think that he maybe saved 50,000 babies' lives with his activities. I'm here. To Actually, I think most of, most of these men never physically the majority yeah. never physically hurt yeah. anyone. It's just that Clay Wagner's was so widespread. Spread, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and if you read his book, uh, uh, 
fighting the great American Holocaust. Uh, you will see how, how he was able to do that. It was absolutely brilliant and very isolated and and very successful and very determined. But anyway, uh, the main thing is we, we don't – we ourselves have to come to grips with the fact that this is a worldwide war on all humanity's posterity prosecuted by elite pedophile cannibal Satanists. And that you cannot – God is not pluralistic with those people. We We need – to shift our paradigms now. We need to find a whole new thing. I'll tell you what, last night we were just talking about, well, maybe God held us back because he's giving our opponents enough uh, uh, enough rope to hang themselves. Maybe so, but that still doesn't mean that we won't come to this. We have to, everything has to be on the table at a time like this. And I would just encourage us to be in prayer and to take these people as seriously and above all, we need to stop abandoning them after all these decades. It's an outrage. They turn loose of people and say, you cannot have any contact with anyone who's had anything to do with abortion. Uh, that's subtle, subtle, soft genocide because everybody's involved. We need, there's a few people we need to track down that we've lost track of because of these, uh, these isolation techniques. And, uh, you know, we just, we just need to fearlessly follow the money and power trails to where they go and, uh, and come against them. I guess that's the main thing I wanted to say. Anything you want to add, Jonathan? Yes, I want to add that the name that's on this list, that, excuse me, the name that is not on this list that stands out the most in my mind is Reverend Paul Hill. Right. And Paul Hill was put yeah. to death. I attended his execution more than 15 years ago, and it was accompanied by um, an amazing uh, thunderstorm that even the secular reporters could see was... Um, almost choreographed with his execution. Don't take my word for it. HBO documented it, and many others uh, did. I think it's still online. But uh, Paul Hill, his body lies a moldering in the grave, but his spirit marches on. And we need to stand behind these martyrs and these people, even if we're not, and I'm not, advocating, and Rob isn't advocating that people go out and do what they did, but we should not abandon them. And we need to understand that their sacrifice, if we have uh, any ethics at all in this conflict, we need to recognize their sacrifice, honor their sacrifice, and make sure that their sacrifice is not in vain, and that we don't abandon them because they loved their neighbors. They did more than most of us have done. Uh, so that's, that's all I had to say, is that we should not abandon them and that we should uh, not shy away from looking at them and from relating to them in their incarceration as prisoners of Christ. Download a text version of this list at terrorofgod.com forward slash POC list dot text.